All 11 News starts with severe weather Team 11 coverage. New at noon, showers moving through our area. You can see all that green and storm tracker Doppler 11 radar. Thanks for joining us. I'm Gordon Lesh. And I'm Peggy Finnegan. Let's get straight to severe weather. Team 11 meteorologist Danielle Dozier with updated tracking on this system. Good afternoon, Gordon and Peggy. I've been tracking rain at times throughout the day today. It's a gloomy day. The temperatures are chilly, and here's what I'm expecting for the rest of the afternoon. We will be in and out of showers here in the Pittsburgh area, as you see here this afternoon, from 2 into about 4.30, 5 o'clock, and then that rain will continue to push off to the east with time giving way to a clearing sky, making for a really cold night ahead. In fact, I am tracking the potential for frost, and I'll let you know how low those temperatures get tonight coming up in just a few minutes. Breaking right now, we just got the daily coronavirus update from Allegheny County. That's right, and we've learned two more people have died from the virus. That brings our total to 111 deaths since the pandemic started. The county is also reporting 19 new cases since yesterday, bringing our total to just under 1,400 cases. 247 of those patients have had to be hospitalized. Also breaking at noon, more grim news for the U.S. economy. A new report says American businesses cut more than 20 million jobs in April. The study by the payroll company ADP shows every part of the economy was impacted. Experts predict the job losses will continue through this month with hiring expected to pick back up in June as states reopen. And more breaking news right now. Ross Township police are, are trying to put to rest theories about the murder of a pit researcher. Dr. Bing Liu was a research assistant professor. His department leaders say that he was studying the coronavirus when he was killed. And there are reports that he was on the verge of significant findings. He was killed Saturday inside his house on Elm Court in Muse, in uh, the Muse apartments, I should say. Police say the shooter was a man that Dr. Liu knew. That man killed himself a short time later. In the past half hour, Ross Township Police released a statement saying they found zero evidence that this tragic event has anything to do with the victim's work at Pitt and the current health crisis. They say that the murder-suicide was the result of a lengthy dispute regarding the victim and an intimate partner. Ross Police have handed their case over to federal authorities since both Dr. Liu and his alleged killer are not U.S. citizens. Meanwhile, several western Pennsylvania counties are banding together. They are sending a strong message to the governor saying we are ready to reopen. Commissioners from Butler, Fayette, Greene, and Washington County say residents are angry. They sent a letter to Governor Wolf asking that they be allowed to start the reopening process. The letter says they're frustrated with the lack of communication and inconsistencies from Harrisburg. It lays out why they're ready to go to the yellow phase, highlighting a low rate of cases. One Fayette County commissioner wrote, you asked us to sacrifice to flatten the curve. Fayette County did just that, and no, at no point in this crisis was our health care system overwhelmed by patients. The letter also calls for guidance and resources. Right now, the policy is not consistent. Some businesses have gotten waivers. Some have not. What is it based on? It's very subjective. Um, it's not necessarily based on objective statistical data. One Butler County Commissioner told Channel 11 that he's not in favor of taking legal action as long as they have open communication with Governor Wolf's office and the Department of Health. We'll be working through the day to find out if they're able to have any conversations with the governor's office. The threat of a lawsuit came just hours after the governor praised southwestern Pennsylvania's efforts to slow the virus. The governor said the region has done a phenomenal job and he hopes to move forward soon. He said the main priority remains the health and safety of the people. It's not meant to be uh, a, uh, any kind of a slight on, on anybody. I, I think that the southwest is doing a phenomenal job and again, uh, we'll be making another announcement soon, and the, the hope is that we can move quickly there. The governor said as of right now, there is no announcement scheduled for reopening other parts of the state. And after we've been told all this time that changes have been implemented, and I'm left wondering what the hell is wrong here? 
State lawmakers are just furious over delays with the state's unemployment system. And now they want to know who is to blame. Target 11 has been investigating these mounting complaints. And this afternoon, Channel 11's Mike Holden is looking into the controversy over this decades-old system. Filing for unemployment has been a total nightmare. At least that's what we're hearing over and over again for people who try to get on the website. State senators have heard those concerns, and they say now is the time we make an immediate change. Two Pennsylvania Senate committees met to hammer out the issues plaguing the unemployment system. They questioned the Department of Labor and Industry Secretary. The secretary said there has been a record 1.7 million claims in PA, and staffing had previously been slashed because of prior low unemployment numbers, which led to backlogs and delays. He also said the unemployment office's computer system is outdated. The department has now hired more people to help with claims. However, some local folks are still waiting on their unemployment checks almost two months later, they say enough is enough and they can't wait any longer. Please, actually take care of the people that actually been started this like months ago. You know what I'm saying? I mean, people is hurt out here. It shouldn't be no people in the food bank line. Who will be held accountable and in what way so that at least the unemployed Pennsylvanians still waiting for a payment can know their current suffering will lead to a better functioning department in the future? I will be held accountable. The Department of Labor and Industries computer system is now set to be upgraded this fall. Meantime, Michael says he still has not gotten his money. We're working to get some help for him for Channel 11 News starting at 5 o'clock tonight. Plus, working to talk with local senators about their measures moving forward. Reporting this afternoon, Mike Holden, Channel 11 News. All right, thanks, Mike. Pittsburgh City Council has voted to extend the mayor's coronavirus disaster declaration. It will now expire in two weeks. According to our troop partners, until then, it bans public gatherings and urges everyone to practice social distancing and wear a face mask in public. One council member said, even though we will probably be moving toward a yellow phase soon, that it's still important to continue efforts to stay safe. President Donald Trump now says the White House Coronavirus Task Force will continue indefinitely after backlash over reports that it would begin to wind down. As Channel 11's Jacqueline Fell reports, the president is ready to shift the focus to reopening the economy. The president, who originally said the White House Coronavirus Task Force would dissolve entirely, is now tweeting it would evolve and remain in place indefinitely. The president said that the task force would now focus on safely reopening the U.S. He also said it would be, quote, very focused on vaccines and therapeutics. Several states are moving forward with plans to loosen restrictions meant to slow the spread of the virus so that businesses can begin reopening. With that move comes health experts' concerns that there will be a spike in coronavirus cases and deaths. Congressional Democrats and health experts criticized the White House notion that it was time to begin winding down the task force. The top experts on the panel, Dr. Deborah Birx and Dr. Anthony Fauci, aren't going anywhere. But the president says other officials may come and go. Reporting outside Washington, Jacqueline Fell, Channel 11 News. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg is in the hospital with an infection. Doctors say a gallstone caused that infection. The 87-year-old had non-surgical treatment at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore yesterday. She's expected to be in the hospital for a day or two, but we're told that she still plans to hear arguments in court cases over the phone today. As the race to cure the coronavirus intensifies, there is some more promising news today. Clinical trials are getting underway on a revolutionary new vaccine that could possibly be ready later this year. NBC's Tom Costello has details. At NYU Hospital in New York, shoulders out for a groundbreaking vaccine trial. And this one is different. Rather than building a vaccine from the virus itself, researchers from Pfizer and a German partner are instead trying to alter the virus's genetic code. NYU Chief of Infectious Disease, Dr. Mark Mulligan, is leading the trial. It was just in January that the, the viral sequence was first published. Um, here we are, uh, less than four months later, and we are launching a trial here in the U.S. Among the first 12 healthy Americans to get the injection, yoga instructor Melissa Honkinen. 
Melissa learned of the need for the volunteers from her husband, a doctor at NYU. We live so close. I could just walk and um, just be helpful to um, humanity at this time. Researchers think this trial could lead to an emergency FDA vaccine approval by September. They'll take longer to ramp up production and roll out. Here's what's interesting. The vaccine carries the genetic code known as messenger RNA that instructs the cells to make the proteins associated with the coronavirus, but without making someone sick. The hope is that the immune system will kick in to create the antibodies to fight off COVID-19. And Pfizer is now testing four genetic vaccine variations. There is always risks with every new vaccine and treatments. I do think the urgency here, the tremendous medical need and the suffering seems to outweigh those risks. Because it's a natural genetic process, doctors believe the risk is actually low. But outside experts caution it's still experimental. The big question that trials have to answer is, will the vaccine be effective? Will it be able to produce a good protective response against infection with COVID-19? And will it be safe to use? I'm Tom Costello in Washington. Back to you. Dozens of fine wine and good spirit stores will begin to reopen Friday in Yellow Phase counties, including some in Lawrence and Mercer. 77 stores have limited in store access. No more than 25 people will be allowed at a time, inside at a time. Customers will have to wear masks and practice social distancing, and there will be one way traffic patterns at the aisles. Stores have also installed plexiglass barriers at the registers to separate customers and employees. Happening now, the Pittsburgh Food Bank is getting ready for another distribution. Yeah, it starts in less than an hour at the airport. Officials say they're prepared to serve a thousand vehicles. Drivers must stay in their cars once again, and the food will be loaded into the trunk or back seat. Each car will get two boxes with about 50 pounds of food. This is Chopper 11 video from the distribution there last month, and you can see hundreds of cars lined up. The food bank says about 800 vehicles came that day, and they appreciate the airport's willingness to help out. Meanwhile, there is another pet food giveaway happening later this week. The Pittsburgh Aviation Animal Rescue Team is hosting the distribution Friday at the Allegheny County Airport. It is from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. It is the second event of its kind, but this time there will be food for cats and dogs. At the giveaway a couple of weeks ago, volunteers served more than 1,000 cars. Not being able to go back to school, they're definitely going to be disappointed. But that's a very real possibility this fall. What some are asking the Wolf administration to do now. Plus, Detroit car makers are ready to roll again under certain circumstances. What the powerful auto workers union says must happen before they get back to work. And as kids work to learn from home, some of them might have an advantage when they finally do get back to the classroom thanks to a new tutoring program. Nobody can read between the lies. She's an 18-year-old girl. She got a settlement. You saw a little money. You wanted a big red truck. Like Judge Judy. Shiny, shiny, shiny red truck. <laughs> Judge Judy. Weekdays at 4 and 4.30 on Channel 11.
KXI Now, your source for original local shows. Get the inside scoop on all the hot events, entertainment, and celebrities in and around Pittsburgh every week. Stream Access Pittsburgh on demand anytime on WPXI Now. Channel 11 News, 11 at 11. 11 minutes of news and weather before the first commercial. CMU is using artificial intelligence to help teachers and tutors during this pandemic. Channel 11's Jennifer Demozik shows us how it works. So it says 20 people are going to a concert. This is an example of an algebra problem kids might do if they were working with the Carnegie Mellon developed software. The university has paired mentors with new artificial intelligence software in several school systems in our area, including Pittsburgh Public Schools. Pitt Rising Junior Demi Lola Ayula was one of the mentors working with middle school kids at Westinghouse Academy before the coronavirus closed schools. Twice a week after the kids do math problems on the computer, she meets with them individually. That's why the one-on-one -on -one sessions are important so you can basically see how the, how the student thinks and see like what methods and what do, what do they get frustrated with. Their learning is then tracked by the new AI tutoring system. He's a little bit behind in his progress called PL2. We got a demonstration of it from CMU. And so the system actually is creating this very detailed statistical map uh, of how the student is doing, right? How they're learning, how they're progressing through the material. And it can adapt in real time to challenge kids with new problems at their level and then make suggestions to the mentors on how to help them continue to grow. And those are important for us so we can go back, so we can um, look back into it and see like, oh, did the student improve or not? We have found that uh, with this kind of technology, students can make progress at at least twice the rate that they usually do in mathematics. And once the kids go back to school after the pandemic? And we're going to find evidence that this really does accelerate student learning. Um, and that will help us make the technology better, uh, but also improve learning outcomes for students around the region. Jennifer Tomazic, Channel 11 News. The professor says CMU is using this program to address an imbalance between growing demand for high-level jobs and the struggle for schools to keep up with that demand. The largest food pantry in Beaver County is in desperate need of donations. Faith Restoration Food Pantry, it's in Manaka, says it is way beyond its max capacity. It usually feeds around 300 people, but it's now feeding more than 1,000. And as more people lose their jobs, the need will likely grow. But as soon as it comes in, it goes right back out the door that week because we're just trying to give as much as we possibly can. I mean, our meat is, we pretty much have no meat left. It's pretty much gone. Box items, spaghetti. When we were there yesterday, residents dropped off two truckloads of supplies. If you'd like to help out, you can find out how on WPXI.com. An in-person but socially distant graduation ceremony is planned for North Hills High School seniors. It's happening May 30th, 10 a.m. at Martorelli Stadium. Each graduate will be given a scheduled time to show up walk across the stage, and then leave. They can bring four family members who must practice social distancing, and everyone must also wear a mask. During these difficult times, community matters even more. And so that's why we're teaming up with UPMC to make sure people have options and can get help if they need it. We're talking to UPMC doctors to help you deal with stress and hearing how telemedicine is working during the pandemic and will become more important going forward. Join us for Community Matters tonight at 8 o'clock on our WPXI Now streaming app. Good afternoon. I hope you're having a great Wednesday. I know it is cloudy out there. We've been tracking rain. I've even been seeing some snow in spots earlier this morning. Here's what to expect for the rest of the day. We're going to have that cloudy sky. The temperatures are only going to be in the 40s. So it's going to be a very cold day considering the average is upper 60s. These high temperatures today are running roughly 20 degrees below average. Here's our storm tracker maps as we head into the rest of the afternoon. We will continue to see some scattered showers from time to time. Here's 430. Temperatures at this point are warm enough to where anything that's out there would be in the form of rain. These showers will continue to move from west to east across the area through the late afternoon and early evening, giving way to a clearing sky from that direction west to east later on tonight. So here's 7 o'clock, and we're seeing Beaver and Newcastle clear. Pittsburgh, still a few clouds in the area, but that will be short-lived as we head closer into about 8, 9 o'clock. We have a clear sky. 
11 o'clock, clear sky across the rest of the area. And this is really important because we have something really cool in the sky to talk about that I'm going to let you know you can spot, and we'll have more on that coming up in the next half hour, so stick around. But it'll be clear tonight, making way for a cold night ahead, and into your Thursday morning, we are going to have plenty of sunshine as the sun comes up. Dry conditions to start the day Thursday. We have new data coming in that has been bringing in a chance for some late day showers on Thursday. Two o'clock, still fairly quiet across the area, but we do increase the clouds on Thursday. And here's the chance for some late day showers, a little green showing up on the map there. The five o'clock hour, so I don't want to entirely rule that out and that happening. We'll throw that in the five day forecast. Once we get into Thursday night and Friday, the rain does become a little more widespread across the area. Temperatures tonight, guys, really cold for May standards. We're falling down into the lower 30s with 33 degrees with areas of frost and calm winds. And so tonight, all across the area, we're looking at the perfect ingredients for frost formation, which is clear skies and calm winds and temperatures falling down into the 30s. Look at Butler dropping down to 31 degrees, Indiana 30, Greensburg near 30 degrees as well. Really just a cold morning tomorrow morning if you're heading out. Plenty of sunshine, though, as the sun comes up near 39 at 8 o'clock. But you will need that thicker coat if you're out early doing a little walking. Here's a look at the hour-by-hour -hour forecast for tomorrow. Sunshine, increasing clouds as the day wears on. And we are looking at that chance for some showers building in during the late afternoon hours. Overall, the temperatures are better at least. We're looking at highs in the upper 50s, but still well below the average of upper 60s. Some of us will top out in the lower. 60s tomorrow. Near 60, Beaver, Butler, Indiana, Greensburg. Same thing really here in Pittsburgh. You can see common numbers there near 60 degrees for the afternoon. The five day forecast with your weekend always in view, and it's pretty busy, so let's spend some time on it here. 48 degrees on Wednesday goes to 59 Thursday, 46 on Friday, and we're going to be left with some rain and snow showers Friday night into Saturday and a few flurries sticking around for Saturday. Well, I can't do anything with it. I mean, the cash it would be fraud, in my opinion. And he's talking about a coronavirus relief check sent to his late father. We're finding out he's not the only one. And what's more important, lives or jobs? That's a question many state leaders are facing as they figure out how and when to reopen. The new tool that could help them decide. Channel 11 News is committed to covering the coronavirus, bringing you what's happening now. Certain restrictions are now lifted on some outdoor activities. What's new? Record number of unemployment claims. If you need help, the best time they say is to call Thursdays and Fridays. And what's next? Red, yellow, green. Governor Wolf's color-coded reopening system is set up in three phases. Today we expect to hear from the governor about which areas could start to reopen. Count on Channel 11 Morning News for live coverage of the coronavirus every morning.
Sky, like Judge Judy. PennDOT and the Turnpike are taking a hit because of the pandemic, but you might be surprised by how much. PennDOT says they lost about $90 million in revenue last month. So they're asking the federal government and other agencies for help. If they don't get it, it could impact future construction and maintenance work. Uh, we are also evaluating our program, uh, whether we get the money or whether we not do not get the money, where we're going to stand. Obviously, if we get the money, we're going to be in a good position and we can continue. The PA Turnpike is suffering too. Money it usually gets from tolls and gas taxes are also down. U.S. automakers plan to reopen their factories within two weeks, where allowed. Fiat, Ford, and General Motors closed their U.S. factories in mid-March. Combined, they employ about 150,000 factory workers in the United States. The United Auto Workers Union has agreed to let workers get back to work by May 18th if safety plans are in place and the union can file grievances and seek closures if the virus spreads at the factories. Allstate will likely give car insurance customers an additional rebate because of reduced driving during the pandemic. We told you last month when the company said it would return $600 million in premiums. Allstate says driving has increased since then, but it's still very low. Lyft has a new program for people who want to pay less and don't mind waiting longer for their rides. The wait and save option gives riders a lower fare if they're willing to wait between 5 and 40 minutes. The rideshare industry has seen a plunge in demand because of the coronavirus. It's one of our area's top summer destinations, but why you may have trouble enjoying Ohio Pile even after the lockdown is lifted. And what I'm worried about is who's not getting the checks that really need them. He's concerned after getting a coronavirus check sent to his dead father. What you should do if you get one. Every candidate, every voice, every vote matters. From the campaign trail to your backyard, we're talking to the candidates about the big issues and to the voters who will decide the election. Channel 11 News, Decision 2020 coverage.
News brings you what's happening now on the coronavirus. Certain restrictions are now lifted on some outdoor activities. What's new and what is happening next? Today we expect to hear from the governor about which areas could start to reopen. Count on Channel 11 News every morning. Pittsburgh's chief meteorologist Stephen Cropper tracking the weather in your neighborhood. Breaking out 1230, the state health department just announced 94 deaths, 94 more additional deaths from the coronavirus. And there are nearly 900 new cases since yesterday, bringing the statewide total to just under 52,000 cases. While the state doesn't track how many patients have recovered, they do tell us more than 204,000 people have tested negative for the virus. Locally, there are five new cases in Beaver County, three more deaths there, and one new case in Butler County, no new cases in Fayette, one more case in Washington, and four more cases in Westmoreland County, including two more deaths. Well, you'll need the umbrella this afternoon. Showers are moving through as we take a live look over downtown Pittsburgh. Severe Weather Team 11 meteorologist Daniel Dozier is timing out the rest of the day from home. Danielle? Good afternoon, Gordon. It's been a wet morning for us. Some of us have even been seeing some snow mixed in. What I can tell you is that this afternoon, it's going to be some periodic showers, but they will be clearing from west to east late day and into the evening. So we're looking for the umbrellas today for sure. Temperatures will be only climbing in the upper 40s. Here's our storm tracker maps. Two o'clock this afternoon, you can still see some wet weather in Pittsburgh and across a lot of the area. Here's 430, keeping that threat for showers in, but they do clear out by evening, giving way to something really cool in the sky tonight still to come. I'll show you what you can look up and see coming up in just a few minutes. All right. Thanks, Danielle. We're digging into the debate over how and when to reopen our schools. Parents have had to homeschool their children, and they're going to have to make tough child care choices, especially as communities start to reopen. The American Academy of Pediatrics has issued some guidelines for going back to school, including planning to open in phases, planning for intermittent closures, making sure schools have cleaning procedures in place, and testing students and staff. So we asked state leaders if they think schools can reopen in the fall. And if they can't, what comes next? Channel 11's Aaron Martin has more on the major differences between the governor and top lawmakers. There aren't any more school buses that are taking students from Perry Traditional Academy, and that's the case at all schools in Pennsylvania at this point. The Department of Education has raised the possibility that this could extend into the fall, but tonight one local lawmaker is publicly pressuring the department to make sure that students are back in the classroom. Come September. One of the great things that I learned is that they actually really do like school. Jenny Leonard has been working with her kids in the virtual classroom, but like a lot of parents, she's anxious for the day when school will go back to normal. It's a move Speaker of the House Mike Terzai says needs to happen by September. If we do not make sure that those kids are safely returned to school in the fall, there will be a crisis every bit as big as the COVID crisis. Days after Pennsylvania's education secretary told reporters during a conference call parents needed to prepare for the possibility of virtual learning extending into the fall, Terzai sent this letter demanding the department come up with a plan to reopen schools. There's no doubt in my mind that you can have a plan to return students safely to school all across the state. Yes, you're going to have to take into um, localities into account, but that, that's, you've got six months to get this done. A Department of Education spokesman did not return our interview request, but sent this statement saying, quote, at this time there are no plans to keep schools closed in the 2020-21 school year. However, any future decisions made regarding school openings will be grounded in the health and safety of our communities. Governor Wolf's reopening plan keeps schools closed until a county enters the green phase, but when that will happen remains unclear. Well, I have a very strong faith, Aaron, and I am very, very hopeful that they will be able to return to school. Now, Leonard and some of the other parents we've spoken with say one of their biggest concerns is the uncertainty, not knowing if or when their students will be allowed back into a classroom. That's something that isn't likely to change over the next few weeks, and when an answer could come remains an unknown. Reporting tonight in Perry North, Aaron Martin, Channel 11 News. A Pennsylvania University says it's helping states figure out how to reopen while keeping people healthy. The University of Pennsylvania just released an online tool looking at different scenarios. 
It estimates the number of lives that could be saved versus how many jobs could be lost. According to the model, if states continue to continue their stay-at-home orders, the model predicts nationwide 117,000 virus deaths through the end of June, with about 18 million jobs lost, partially reopening 162,000 deaths and 14 million jobs lost. And if all states fully reopen, 350,000 deaths and half a million jobs lost. How we value lives against economic outcomes, uh, this is, these are decisions that we need to make democratically through our elected officials. The simulator used data from Johns Hopkins, the American Community Survey, and other sources. It is updated weekly, so results can change. Racism is now considered a public health crisis. That symbolic motion is now supported by the Allegheny County Council. Councilwoman Olivia Bennett says the COVID-19 pandemic made it even more apparent. She pointed to disparities in African-American communities nationwide. A report released by Pittsburgh's Gender Equity Commission found disparities for African-Americans in education, mortality rate, and health care. It's not an indictment. We're not, we're not trying to divide. We're not trying to say white people are bad. We're not trying to point fingers. What we're trying to do is diagnose an issue that is definitely present in our region. Councilwoman Bennett says the county plans to work hand in hand with the city of Pittsburgh to address these issues. Uh, about 120 million Americans have now received coronavirus relief checks, but Channel 11 is finding out some of them are dead. Channel 11's Joe Arena spoke to a local man who says the federal government mailed one of those checks to his late father. Surprise is an understatement. I was shocked. Local attorney Jack Goodrich is talking about the stimulus check that he and his wife received for her deceased father. And Jack says he knows more people that this has happened to. I ran into a couple people that I know that have had family members die within the last year, and they had direct deposit of these checks. So why are these checks being issued? We did some digging and learned that if someone filed their 2018 or 19 taxes and has since passed away, relatives of that person may still receive a stimulus check in his or her name. And if you think checks being made out to the dead is delaying the process of your check, think again. The National Taxpayers Union Foundation says the IRS could have taken the time to cross-reference the Social Security's master file of all deaths in the United States, but that would have delayed the checks for weeks. But Jack says every check made out to someone who is deceased means someone who really needs the money isn't getting it. We're having a lot of financial distress already in this country, and $1,200 is a lot of money to a lot of people. And what I'm worried about is who's not getting the checks that really need them. So what do you do if you get a check made out to a dead relative? Right now, that's a gray area. The Treasury Department says they plan to release guidelines on what you should do. But as far as Jack is concerned, this check will never be cashed. Well, I can't do anything with it. I mean, to cash it would be fraud, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to return the check. And it might be a good idea to take Jack's advice on this. There are no legal ramifications that have been made public as to whether cashing that check can get you in trouble. So it might be a good idea to just hold on to that check for now. In downtown Pittsburgh, Joe Arena, Channel 11 News. A PennDOT project in a popular recreation area was supposed to wrap up soon, but coronavirus pushed it back. The double blow to businesses in this western Pennsylvania destination. Plus, the new warning about an invasive plant in our area that could be deadly. As local communities work to get back to business, Channel 11 News will continue to be on the front lines with what is happening now, with experts answering questions about our local economy. Financial support is still out there. With a team of reporters every day covering every aspect as we get back to business, here to make sure leaders are putting your health first. And today, the governor backtracked. The next steps are crucial, and you can count on us to sort out the details every day on Channel 11 News at 5.
where you live. Watch Channel 11 News at 5. New at noon, an invasive plant is taking over western Pennsylvania, and experts say it could be deadly. It's even popping up in the drive through lane of a local Starbucks. Channel 11's Liz Kilmer explains what it is and how to protect yourself. A lot of folks are enjoying the outdoors right now, visiting parks like this one, but you really want to be careful because among all of the greenery, there is a toxic, poisonous plant that's popping up across our region. It looks like just an ordinary weed, but you want to be careful if you come across it. Researchers with Penn State Extension warn that this plant, the poison hemlock, is aggressively spreading across our state, popping up along our highways and in parks, even the Starbucks parking lot in Wexford, a plant that's toxic to livestock and people. It is a poisonous plant. It, it, it can kill animals. Uh, even a, a thousand pound animal can cause rashes when you touch the plant. It could be dangerous both internally and externally. Now, the way the plant looks now is going to change. We're going to talk more about what you want to look out for come late May in a report I'm working on for five. Back to you. They had promised us repeatedly that they would, do, they would not interrupt business. But that business owner says PennDOT broke that promise. What she wants the agency to do about this project. You know you have a lot of questions. Only Channel 11 News can walk you through what it's like taking a coronavirus antibody test. My test took about 10 minutes start to finish. Stay with Channel 11 for answers about coronavirus. Pittsburghers always come together. The ballroom here has turned into a major food production line to help feed thousands of families. We're doing 60,000 meals a week. Channel 11 salutes the helpers. The seven day forecast now on your screen all the time on Channel 11 News. That's the way it goes, and it is what it is, and there's, I just suck it up, is what they told me. That frustrated business owner says that's what PennDOT told her about a long-running project right in front of her business in picturesque Ohio Pile. Her business, uh, or that project, was supposed to end next month, but now it's not going to finish until July. And as Channel 11's Christine D'Antonio found out, that means more disruptions for businesses who are fighting just to hang on in this popular destination. 
store. There's not very many places like us. Pamela Cruz has owned Falls Market for a decade. It's an iconic restaurant and general store in Ohio Pile, which caters to some 1.5 million tourists during the spring and summer months. It's a tradition to come to Falls Market in Ohio Pile. Yeah, yeah. And we're really sad we're not open right now. <laughs> Falls Market closed its store and restaurant due to COVID-19 and is currently offering takeout. But Cruz says she's got another problem, and it has to do with this. A $12.4 million project on Route 831 that's designed to improve safety for visitors. But Cruz says once the governor gives the green light to reopen, she's concerned about how she'll operate as crews are doing the work right in front of her store. You can see just how close we are to the construction here. This is the road that is being worked on. This is Falls Market. And this is the door to get in. When PennDOT brought this project to the owner's attention, it promised that it wasn't going to impact business. But it definitely is. Just suck it up, is what they told me. Because of project setbacks, construction crews are now aiming for July 3rd to wrap up their work, which is a huge issue because that's peak season for business here. We're already hanging on by a thread. We've lost a month and a half already. Um, it's really hard to recover from that. Cruz says she's also worried about safety for visitors as they try and cross Route 381 and is begging PennDOT to make this section of the project a priority to get it done now so that she doesn't have to close her doors permanently. In Fayette County, Christine D'Antonio, Channel 11 News. Taking a look at our forecast for the rest of the day today, it's going to be a pretty gloomy day with the cloud cover sticking around at least through much of the afternoon and so will the rain in spots. We're looking at some scattered showers continuing. This is our storm tracker maps at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You can see that rain pretty widespread still across the area. But as our low pressure system moves across the area, that's going to be ending the rain from west to east. So by 4 or 5 o'clock or so, we're starting to see that rain wrap up across a good part of the area. And as we head into this evening, we're actually looking at a clearing sky. Still hanging on to some clouds, though, I think through 7 p.m., but we're seeing that sky clear up to the north and west, and that'll give way to clearing skies for the rest of the area as drier air works its way in behind this weather system. So by 11 p.m., it's clear really all across the area, and as we head into the overnight, clear skies. Now, these clear skies with calm winds will be allowing for a really cold night tonight. We're looking at lows down in the lower 30s. The winds do pick back up tomorrow afternoon with gusts occasionally to 25 miles per hour. We will also increase the clouds throughout the day tomorrow. And our new data coming in also shows a chance for some late day showers coming in, mainly during the four or five o'clock hour, as you see the way it looks right now. So that's something we'll be tracking for you over the next 24 hours or so. Here's what I wanted to show you. This is something cool happening in, in the sky tonight. It is the super moon flower moon. It is the last of four super moons this year. So you're going to want to go out when the sky turns clear later tonight. It's actually going to peak on Thursday at 645 in the morning and we're talking when the moon reaches perigee. So it's reaching its closest point to Earth in its orbit. So this is something really cool happening and typically these supermoons appear 15% larger and 30% brighter. So I think the weather conditions will cooperate once that, that sky that is clears out later on tonight. 33 degrees overnight tonight with areas of frost. So you're going to want to protect your sensitive flowers and vegetation tonight. 30 in Greensburg and in Indiana, 32 in Washington and 34 in Uniontown. Hour by hour forecast tomorrow. Temperatures are only climbing close to 60 degrees. You can see the average is 69, so we are going to be below that. Upper 50s and low 60s for all of us really tomorrow, and we increase the clouds with the breeze developing and some late day showers. Here's the five day forecast with your weekend always in view. Friday showers 46, rain and snow showers are going to be in the forecast as we head into Friday night into Saturday, but our latest data shows the model data starting to dry up the conditions as we head into Saturday. So right now, kind of left in just a few flurries with 45 degrees. Mother's Day Sunday looks better with the temperature up to about 56 degrees. We'll dry things out and we'll bring in a mix of sun and clouds. Thanks, Danielle. Now here's local steals and deals. 
Hi, my name is Lisa Robertson, coming to you from home, as so many of us are right now. Here at Local Steals and Deals, we know that this is a time that is unprecedented, and we're all looking for ways to keep the small businesses going in America, to support those family businesses, and to help ourselves stay connected. We are so excited to really help you find those companies, and today, one of the founders of Charge Hub, a small company outside of Chicago, is here. How you doing, Rock? I'm doing well. How are you, Lisa? I'm doing great. We want to keep great American businesses in business until everything gets back to where we want it to be. Absolutely, yes. You know, um, during these uncertain times, it's actually a, a, a great blessing to us in disguise to be able to offer the largest discount we've ever done. Um, it keeps our, our lights on and at the office. It keeps it keeps people working from home, keeps our shippers shipping in the warehouse. So Charge Hub is a great company and you have some of the most popular ideas out there for charging multiple things at a time. Can you kind of step us through the three things you brought for us to help us out? Um, yes, I'd love to go into the products. Um, you know, our uh, Charge Hub X3 is the uh, first Charge Hub we've uh, ever came out with. It's still very popular. Um, it's actually our most popular model and it's really what people fell in love with with us and really our top of the line charger is the X5 Elite Charger. There's five USB ports here and a wireless charging pad on top. Extremely powerful and then we took that technology, really put it into a power bank, super thin, uh, very powerful built-in cables, wireless charging, and USB port fits in your person pocket. Those are some key products. We have uh, additional products available as well. Wonderful. I like the fact that you can charge when you're sitting or you can walk around the house. So <laughs> all, everything's, everything's covered there on that one. Thank you. Appreciate it. I want to remind everyone this is the best value they've ever offered on these great Charge Hub ideas, 30 to 50 percent off. If you'd like to see those and the other great ideas we have for you, you can go to localsteals.com and you can see all of them. Thank you so much. The coronavirus has taken its toll on wedding season. The creative way one couple got married that you'll never forget. They'll never forget. Coronavirus can't hey, keep right this there. local teacher from her students. Reading, teaching, and making crafts online. She's finding ways to connect while staying apart. It's really touching to see someone else care about your child. Coming together in a time of crisis makes us proud to be from Pittsburgh. Proud to be from Pittsburgh. Brought to you by your local Honda dealers. Great cars, great people. For a great deal on a Honda, visit shophonda.com. Followed by NBC Nightly News at 6.30. They're big fans of the morning show, uh, so it, it was the perfect match. 
Well, you've probably seen many couples coming up with creative ways to get married during this pandemic. One couple in Iowa got married live on the radio. They heard their favorite DJ say he wanted to marry a couple on the air. So when their wedding plans kept changing, they decided it was a great idea. The DJ officiated through a window while the couple stood outside. Everything can be postponed. You can redo stuff later and still treat it just like it, everybody was there originally. The couple says they do plan to have a more traditional wedding later this year. You can't stop love, not even with the pandemic. That's all for Channel 11 News at noon. Our next newscast comes up tonight at 5. Thanks for watching and have a great day. WPXI is proud to partner with UPMC to present Community Matters. The COVID-19 situation can be stressful, but joining me today to talk about what to do if you have anxiety is Dr. Jack Roselle, Medical Director of Resolve Crisis Services at 